great, and I'd like to figure out how to do that better. So we're at uh, Module 5 of the Short Ross course at, uh, at Huey um, on the 1st of December, uh, 2017. Um, yesterday, uh, in Modules 3 and 4, um, we covered uh, how to um, uh, how to do uh, edge MIP uh, node development in C++ and then we covered and we got the edge MIPs up and running over Wi-Fi, drove them around with joysticks, uh, wrote some ROS nodes to subscribe and publish topics, um, and then spent the afternoon beating our heads against ERDEF and Robot State Publishers. And um, the, um, uh, that's good stuff. It's tedious, but you really got to have it um, if you want to use the broader, if you just want to use the message passing system, then you can stop um, at Monday afternoon, um, or maybe after the first module on, on uh, sorry, um, Wednesday afternoon or the first module on Thursday morning, module two or module three. If you want to use the larger ecosystem, um, then, then you got to uh, make peace with ERDFs, and um, if you want to use the simulation uh, systems, then you got to make peace with SDFs, and we'll do that today. It's not hard. Um, so the, where we're going to go from here is um, there's module five and six, uh, which uh, we're going to cover today. And I think um, uh, many of you will complete both of those. Um, and if you haven't completed uh, the modules from the previous days, um, don't skip over them. Um, listen to this discussion, but go back and finish the modules from the, the previous modules before you start on uh, module five and six. Um, if you finish module six um, uh, by one o'clock this afternoon and you're looking for things to do, there's an optional module seven there. <laughs> Um, which is good, and optional module seven, which I'll try to demonstrate at some point this afternoon, I just want to test it, um, involves um, uh, simulating a turtle bot with a RGDB, RGDB uh, sensor that drives around uh, a, a world um, used doing SLAM navigation, so generating an occupancy grid as it goes. Um, that occupancy grid is published on a topic, like everything else, <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's, it's being collected uh, the, uh, and it's, it's being published by the uh, SLAM navigation algorithm. You can then save that, uh, and you can use that occupancy grid uh, to navigate with, with an adaptive Monte Carlo uh, navigation algorithm. And those are just two quick examples of, of using SLAM, which is a fairly sophisticated uh, uh, navigation algorithm with lots of knobs to adjust it, uh, where you don't actually have to write all the source code, which um, uh, for many generations of graduate students is not how it happened. You know, you spent 90%, 95% of your time writing the plumbing, and then you had spent 5% of the time doing the thing that was actually in your master's or PhD thesis. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the goals here is to uh, let the plumbing take care of itself. Um, so a little motivation. Um, So a little motivation. Um, uh, we're going to uh, learn how to do simulations of robots in gazebo. We're going to focus on mobile robots, um, and, but we will, we'll do, we will simulate some robot arms. Um, um, so the first rule about gazebo is that it crashes a lot when it comes up. Um, uh, where did gazebo come from? Um, uh, gazebo was... Uh, uh, the successor to Brian Gerke's, uh, Brian Gerke did, developed a 2D simulation environment called Player and Stage um, uh, when he was a graduate student at USC. He went to Willow Garage after he finished his PhD and was one of, one of the first, you know, sort of 15 or 20 Willow Garage employees. And um, uh, everybody wanted a 3D simulator. And so Brian and a team of people put together Gazebo as basically a Ross project at Willow Garage. Um, and uh, it used, it, the gazebo is a, uh, in a, uh, a simulation environment, and what we're not seeing here is we're seeing the front end, uh, the graphical environment, and, um, uh, and what I have here is a uh, edge MIP model, uh, and it is, uh, 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 gazebo understands this model because I took the Zacro file uh, that I wrote for yesterday's, uh, yesterday afternoon's uh, module, and I added some additional statements which specify inertia distributions on this and uh, the and other things, friction coefficients and things like that. We'll look at that. Um, and then fired up Gazebo and 
gazebo understands models of robots and it understands models of worlds. And so the gas station is the world. Um, and the uh, um, uh, and the robot is the model. And you can have multiple models, and you can have multiple worlds that overlay. Um, so it's doing real physics. Um, and if we look here on the left, this is just motivation. Um, if we bring, if we open up the physics tab um, and gravity, um, we can see that uh, we could make this thing levitate. I think I did that the other day, so I don't need to repeat that parlor trick. Um, but perhaps more importantly, I can select this uh, robot. Um, and I can, I can interrogate into it, and it's gazebo knows about all the links and whether they're subject to gravity and the physics. Um, this is using uh, uh, ODE, um, the Open Dynamics Engine, as the physics engine that's computing the simulation. So the simulation is running as we talk, as we speak. Um, you can barely see it now. It's running at uh, 0.8 of real time, and, um, and it's uh, updating the video is updating at 52 frames per second. It's really kind of hard to see those small numbers. Um, but um, So I've selected this and pulled out this tab to the right. And you can't see it. And unfortunately, you can't adjust the font in Gazebo. It's a pain in the ass. Um, uh, but um, a Gazebo is smart about this robot model. And it's identified joint left and joint right. Um, and uh, we can apply a torque on these things. So there's no control going on. This is just sitting here. Um, and I've faked. Um, the, uh, I want to write a plugin which actually does closed loop control. Uh, maybe Zach can do this. Um, that does closed loop control to actually balance this. And I've faked it for now um, uh, in this uh, simulation. I've uh, put a pendulum attached rigidly to the, to the robot that hangs down below the axle so it wants to stand up. Um, and so you'll see that it has this very underdamped response because that's kind of a, that's a, a proportional control system with no, with no derivative term. term. Uh, but if we apply a, a little torque, uh, 0 0.2, uh, Newton meters, uh, lo and behold, uh, the robot's going to start rolling, al rolling along. Um, and 0 0.5 and Oh, where are you going? <laughs> Boom. So we had a collision. Uh, so it's doing physics. I'm going to grab it so I can lock the camera on it. Uh, once you select it, you can follow it with the camera. <laughs> so you get the idea. Uh, so there's no control going on here. Um, however, um, is, there, is there friction? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, in fact, um, So Gazebo used to, be, used to crash a lot more on startup. Um, uh, it used to not run unless you had discrete graphics in your computer. And now it runs, uh, actually, I think it runs better on computers that have integrated graphics. Um, it doesn't run faster, but it doesn't crash as much. Um, so don't get freaked out at the fa fact that it, it crashes a lot. Um, um, consider it a just an annoying feature. Um, So I'm waiting. It takes a while to clear itself. Um, you'll see in the tutorial. So the things that I've asked you to do um, for tutorials, um, do a little bit of reading here. Um, and the assignments for this model, uh, this, um, uh, 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 this, this module, this morning's module, are to um, do some Gazebo uh, version 7 tutorials. That's the version that's built into this version of ROS. And, um, Gazebo 7 is not the most recent version, but it's a very decent version. Um, and um, uh, looking forward, we're not going to do this today, but we'll do it um, this afternoon. Um, so we've got the robot here, and we can pull out the side tab, give it a little shove, joint left, 0 0.2. And I can follow the robot with a camera. And go to my go to a window here. So this 
uh, the ROS package gazebo. So I ran this with uh, the command ROS run gazebo ROS gazebo. So I'm running the gazeboized version of ROS. Uh, gazebo as a, as a project is split off from ROS, and so you can, the first part of the tutorial is you'll just run gazebo on the command line, and you're running standalone gazebo not integrated with ROS. Um, looking forward to um, uh, the end of this assignment and this afternoon, uh, I can type ROS topic list, and there's a whole bunch of uh, gazebo topics here. So gazebo link states, model states, parameter states, and so it's publishing the state of the simulation uh, in real time. And uh, in addition, uh, we won't do this until this afternoon, I put a simulated camera on the robot, and uh, these are the topics for the camera. Um, uh, when using a camera plugin, and so um, I can type the command RQT view image and the name of the topic for a camera image, and it'll pop up a little RQT image viewer, which is what the camera sees on the robot. It'll make you seasick. Um, and so here's the robot sort of creening around, the camera's tracking it, and this is what it's seeing in the camera that's on the robot. That's that little bit that's on the top of the robot when we zoomed in. So the nice thing about this is that it, uh, Gazebo gives you a physics simulation um, um, of your machine, and um, you can uh, do kind of useful things with it. And uh, if, you, uh, if your application admits of doing a simulation, uh, it means that you can uh, do a lot of development of the um, uh, code that it takes to run, maintain, navigate, log data from your vehicle or, ins or instrument um, without having the actual physical instrument present. And as software engineers, you all know that the, uh, the double E's and the ME's don't give you the hardware until uh, you're loading the ship, right? <laughs> um, or either that or, or you're, you're, you're just about, you know, you get it for two days before, before things airship and then you don't see it for, for a week. Um, so, um, the second thing that we're going to do is um, uh, kill this. A little motivation this afternoon. So I'm going to bring up a clean simulation. Hit core dumps. So the um, well, it's core dumping. So I want you to go through two sets of tutorials: the Gazebo uh, version seven tutorials. This is all command line Gazebo, and so I've made a note here. Um, uh, in the next set of Gazebo tutorials, that's all these this level of indentation. You'll use the command line Gazebo, not the ROS command Gazebo package. They look the same. The difference is that the ROS version publishes all these topics. Um, so there's the, uh, the robot, nobody's pushing on it, it's not going anywhere. And if I type um, RQT graph with gazebo running, it presents itself to ROS as one node. <laughs> so, uh, and by convention, RQT uh, graph doesn't, doesn't uh, display the ROS out node. Um, not sure that's a good idea, but that's the way it is. Um, and so th in the afternoon, um, you're going to, in the morning, you're going to make the SDF and, and learn about Gazebo um, and get to the point that I just showed you. In the afternoon, uh, we're going to uh, do Gazebo plugins, uh, and you're going to make a, you're going to attach a differential drive controller to your simulation so that you can send a twist command to it and actually drive it around with this um, and to try to complete the picture. And so you, um, the package that I'm asking you to make this afternoon is uh, Eduma, uh uh, the one that you're making this morning is Edumit My Robot Gazebo, Edumit My Robot Gazebo dot launch, and then I'm going to ask you to make some an additional package, um, um, and you're going to be hooking together different modules, many of which you did you did not write the source code and don't need to, um, and uh, that will uh, pull together um, some uh, differential drive package, uh, plugin, and controller, and so this brings up. Um, RViz, and so we've got RViz going here, and Gazebo going here, and so you can think of it as um, Gazebo being the ground truth, 
And when I refresh RQT graph, um, there's a lot going on here. Um, uh, so Gazebo is here. In the, when, when I ran the first launch file, only Gazebo was running. And when I ran the second launch file that you're going to make, we've got a Joy node um, uh, publishing the Joy topic. Your old friend, the, the module that you wrote to publish a twist, that goes to edgemip command. Um, edgemip command goes over to Gazebo because it's going to be drive a differential drive controller plugin that you're using to drive the robot around. Um, Gazebo has a plugin that's uh, a sensor plugin that's pu pu plugging in a, uh, a that's publishing camera topics, and that command line uh, image viewer that I that I popped up, uh, RQT image view is subscribing to it, and Gazebo uh, it, the Gazebo plugin for the differential drive controller uh, usually drive controllers publish an odometry topic, um, and uh, they publish with an odometry message, and in addition um, the uh, uh, package is also publishing joint states. You're going to run a joint state publisher, uh, which will publish, publish TFs, and Gazebo is publishing the TF of the base of the robot. And so you've got a complete set of TFs for resolving the robot in um, Arviz. And so now when you're driving, when you push your joystick forward, uh, you're uh, commanding the differential drive controller to drive forward. And this, think of it in Gazebo. This is the ground truth, what's really happening. Uh, this is what your system knows about it based upon the sensors. And you can see it's got this sort of wonky uh, underdamped response because I'm doing just a pendulum to keep it upright. And these are the odometry uh, widgets. Um, so there's an odometry uh, marker display. And you can control the granularity of it. Um, and And you can see there's quite a bit going on here. Um, we've got the camera topics, and we've got the gazebo topics, and here are all the topics that we've seen before at the bottom uh, that when we were working with the real robot. Um, so the goal of today is uh, gazebo and gazebo ROS integration. Um, and um, I think that with this minimal set of exercises, um, then you know enough to be dangerous and, and pick up other things because once you've used a plugin, um, uh, and we're going to, uh, in the plugin assignment this afternoon, uh, you're going to write the most middle, the hello world plugin. But once you've done that, then it becomes uh, not too hard to figure out how to populate it. All right, so uh, overview of the tutorials. So that's where we're going. Um, and Um, so the first set of tutorials, um, if you go to Gazebo version 7 tutorials, there's like a whole crap load of them. And so, oh God, where do I begin on this? Uh, where you begin is, is uh, I've made links here, so pop up <coughs> each one of these links one at a time, and then do the, um, the sub-tutorials under those links, and skip the ones um, uh, that, I've you can skip the ones that I've suggested that you can skip. Um, so this is too many tutorials, but if you pop up first time gazebo user sub one, um, then I want you to do, um, sorry. I want you to do overview and installation, but don't actually install, uh, because it's already installed. Understanding the GUI, um, and you can skip the model editor. So those are these three tabs right here. Um, understanding the GUI, um, you definitely want to do um, because it walks you through the interface and gives you a map of what things are, what the panels are, um, um, how to control things on the panels, and most importantly, how to drive the mouse. Now, you'd think that since they came from the fa same place, the mouse mapping for Arviz and Gazebo would be the same, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, and I brought, I've got at least, I, one, uh, I think at least one extra three button mouse if anybody needs to borrow a three button mouse because I can't run, I can't run Gazebo or Arviz without a three button mouse. I just can't. Um, and so I've, I've given up trying. Um, so, um, uh, and overview and installation. Don't actually install. It gives you an overview. Um, and, um, 
uh, but don't actually follow the installation instructions. Gazebo installed when you did a Rust desktop full. Uh, skip the model editor over here. And then in um, uh, getting started, um, I've asked you to do a quick start. Gazebo components, gazebo architecture, and how to screen sh screenshot. Um, quick start uh, just uh, has you pop up a gazebo and gets you used to the um, uh, interface. Um, gazebo actually runs as an engine which does the physics and a front end which does the display. So if you're doing any sort of um, uh, super serious uh, simulation, oftentimes you just run the engine and you may run the display not on the same machine. Um, uh, not at all sometimes, and sometimes on a different machine. Um, and um, when we're running big gazebo jobs um, of robots that get controlled at a kilohertz level, um, we run them on like a 12 or 16 core machine, and it runs as a lot of threads. Um, and it can do a pretty surprising amount of real-time simulation if you've got enough CPU power. Um, and uh, so quit to start. Gazebo components, gazebo architecture tells you a little about that. Screenshots, this is pretty straightforward. Um, uh, and now we're uh, getting to the business here, uh, build a robot. Um, so build a robot, um, I've asked you to um, uh, go through Go through uh, model structure and requirements. Um, uh, you can you can skip how to contribute a model. Um, so this tells you where gazebo models models are models of robots. Um, they're stored in dot gazebo. Um, so dot uh, dot gazebo right here. So they're stored in this is dot gazebo, and models are stored here. Each one of these directories is a model, and you're going to make a, a model. You're going to make this model called my robot. Um, and when you uh, access models, uh, so Gazebo knows about a model server, and there's a model server in the cloud that's got like several hundred models. Like last count, I, I, last count was a few years ago. It was like at least 400 or something like that. And um, when you pull down a model for a Cessna or the Willow Garage building, uh, when you when you access it, it'll pull down automatically. Um, and if you're on a slow link, it'll take a while to pull down Willow Garage. But here, we've got a fast pipe, uh, fat pipe, so it shouldn't be a problem. And each model of a robot consists of a model config. Uh, you'll see in this one, model structure and requirements. The model configuration um, XML file uh, basically specifies some high-level stuff. Uh, and most importantly, it gives it a name, uh, and it uh, specifies uh, the 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 one or more SDF files which constitute the model. So this, this model dot config says the model is in model.sdf and my model.sdf for the little robot that I built um, is here. And this looks kind of familiar, right? Looks like erdf. Um, what's different um, is um, um, uh, it hasn't been added here, but in order to actually do a real simulation, we're going to have to add some physics. And so this is an early, an early part of the model where we haven't added the physics yet, but we will. Um, so that's where models live, how to make a model. Um, and then make a mobile robot um, uh, is a, a fairly lengthy tutorial where you're going to, um, I'm just going to run gazebo. Uh, just the command line gazebo, not the ROS version. And what you're going to do is step by step, you're going to uh, build, I'm going to say insert a, I uh, can't see it over here, insert a Pioneer 2DX. So I'm going to insert a Pioneer 2DX robot into my environment. And so you're going to build up a model of the Pioneer 2DX, so part by part. So the body, uh, a caster that it drags uh, back here, two wheels, um, and then uh, you can skip the mesh or not if you want. Um, and if you want, you can add the mesh uh, exterior uh, to it. 
Um, and so this gives you a step-by-step. -step. First you make the body, um, then you add a caster in the back of the body. And in this, in this example, there's a persis persistent image, uh, there's a persistent gazebo running, and so you edit the model file, uh, the SDF file, and then you insert a new version of it. So here's the first version, it's a block. Here's the second version, it's a block with a caster. Here's the third version, it's a block caster on one wheel. You get the idea. Block caster in two wheels, and um, and then you finally you've got a functional robot that you can drive around uh, in a crude fashion by applying torques to the uh, to the wheels. And question? Does this support Zachro as you're as you're giving it? And so yeah. So yeah. So what, so what I what I would recommend you do is that you use your Zachro Zachro file, and um, you'll just add some additional commands which are SDF commands. Zachro doesn't care about them, um, and those just pass through transparently. And so, so the, the gazebo understands Zachro? Yes, okay. yes, absolutely. And so the a very important thing is that um, um, writing Erdes is painful and, and, and to be avoided, right? <laughs> so we all agree about that. It's necessary uh, because it simplifies a whole bunch of things. Um, and uh, having, having to maintain an Erdef and an F SDF, which were consistent with each other, uh, would be humanly impossible. Um, and so the only, the only uh, way to keep from throwing yourself out a window um, is, to, is to use Zachro to maintain one file. And both um, uh, Arviz and all the other tools that you use Erdos and SDF, um, uh, you, can, uh, you, you can process, they, they, they can process in real time um, so they can suck it up and, and translate it on the fly using the Zachro package. Um, and um, uh, next module is attaching mesh meshes. Um, you can skip this one if you want, because um, um, I'm not particularly interested personally in, in simulations. I don't really care if the vehicle looks re physically realistic. Um, uh, if you uh, have your program manager coming in, they might. I don't know. It depends on who they are. Uh, so importing meshes, attaching message, message mes meshes. Um, um, uh, so you can, uh, I think these are less important. I should have said those are optional. Um, add a sensor to the robot, make a simple gripper, add a gripper to the robot, those are important. Um, and then the, we're almost done here with the tutorials. The last uh, tutorials I've asked you to do are to make a simple world. So Gazebo, when it runs, it basically needs two things. It needs a world um, and it needs uh, a robot. So the models are for robot, and the worlds are for what you think, um, the environment. And uh, the thing that I've asked you to do is to um, just do a few of these things. Do building a world um, and modifying a world. And these other ones are optional. Um, obviously, in this environment, digital elevation models is uh, potentially a hugely important thing because we'd like to be able to fly the vehicles over simulated terrain that we get from some uh, multi-beam source. Um, and then actually test uh, how our vehicle performs and have simulated sensors and things like that. And it'll do all that in ray tracing for the, for the sensors. Um, um, uh, finite sound velocity, uh, it doesn't simulate, but um, maybe, maybe someday. Um, the, uh, so um, you can skip over population models, building editor, and digital elevation models and circle back to them when they're important to you um, in the interest of sort of getting to the main events. Because you can imagine what this is. You just need to import a mesh, and it appears. And the example in there that you can import is Mount, they, they give you a Mount St. Helens mesh. Um, and um, here's a link to um, running simulations with different friction properties if you're interested. Uh, you can skip over this if you want. Um, uh, but um, there's a, a really pretty interesting, more exhaustive fr friction example that I'm not going to give here in front of you. But basically, it involves having uh, an array of objects that are on a, on a field. Um, and they have differing amounts of friction, um, and gravity has been tweaked to have a horizontal component, and they, they, you can see them sliding at different rates as they slide off into the sunset. Um, and um, then, uh, and the reason that I I've suggested you could skip some of these um, is that uh, this is this is really important uh, connecting to ROS integration. So these last set of tutorials um, are done with the Gazebo uh, ROS package. So you'll do ROS run Gazebo ROS Gazebo rather than just typing Gazebo. And the uh, tutorials that uh, I suggest you do, uh, pop up that link, um, are here, are 
do Ross overview, um, and uh, which combination of Ross and Gazebo? Don't worry about that. You're going to use Gazebo Seven <laughs> and Ross Kinetic. Um, this is an LTS uh, release, and uh, Ross Two is scheduled for release in December. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to happen, uh, but it's scheduled for release in December, um, and uh, uh, and that means that the LTS uh, release still has another four years to go uh, where it's going to be supported. So in terms of investing your effort, do you need to switch over to ROS2 in December? No, and I'm not going to. Um, uh, using ROS launch, um, um, it, let's see, and uh, installing gazebo ROS packages using ROS launch I want you to do, and you can skip over ROS depth camera integration and circle back to that. Um, that just tells, shows you how to do a plug-in for a RGB uh, camera, RGB cam uh, depth camera. <laughs> Um, and uh, so you can skip over that one and definitely do URDEF and Gazebo. Um, that's important. Um, and that'll sort of, uh, that's the last tutorial that I'm suggesting that you do. And um, uh, I've noted that there's two packages that you're going to, um, uh, that you're going to download. Um, Updated this. Yep. Yeah. So, um, uh, in order to do uh, this in this in this tutorial, you're going to download uh, this set of uh, packages to your uh, to your workspace, um, and it's important um, on this one. It says in the tutorial, but just don't miss it, that um, when you download this package uh, into the workspace, because you're going to work in that package, uh, you need to download the, the kinetic devel branch. And to clone a particular branch, uh, it's git clone name of repository minus b kinetic devel. And further up in the tutorial, there's also a second set of packages that you're going to clone into your workspace so you can fiddle around with them. Um, so just, uh, uh, just if you read the tutorial carefully, it, they're right there, uh, but don't miss it. Um, and then, um, so those tutorials won't take as long as it may seem for my long-winded uh, discussion. Um, the assignment, um, uh, the exercise for you to do um, is to uh, create a Gazebo ROS package with this name um, and um, don't use the directory structure that's specified in creating your own Gazebo ROS package. Yeah, that's really uh, that tutorial is not quite right, um, and and uh, nobody I know does it that way. Um, here's the structure uh, that I recommend you use in your in your package. That edge you, my Ross gazebo. You have an erdef, a launch, and a worlds, um, and that's a good structure uh, for a gazebo package. And then uh, create a Zacro file. Actually, you probably already have this Zacro file going, uh, but move a copy into this um, into this project. Edge my robot .zacro. And begin with the uh, Zachary you created on homework four. I tried to make these assignments cumulative so that you're not starting from scratch in each one. Um, and and you want to add some things. You want to add um, additional Zachary uh, to add additional statements uh, that can be automatically translated to SDF format for use by Gazebo. Um, and so you want to add uh, visual collision and inertial parameters. Um, and uh, your robot already has. Uh, to a wheel left and a wheel right, and these need to you need to add visual collision and inertial parameters. You read about those in the tutorial. Um, and uh, parent and child, you already know about that. Um, and uh, and this is the this is the cheating that I did uh, with my robot. I just put a at the center of mass of the edge emit body down uh, below the axle, um, and uh, want to stick in some friction terms. So just this is the these these are the uh, uh, friction terms that that will be passed through the Zacro file to SDF. So this is Coulomb and viscous friction, um, and then create a, a simple edge uh, robot world, um, and that wor world will go in the slash world subdirectory of your package, and then create a launch file, um, which uh, which launches this, um, and my launch file looks like this. Um,
So my launch file basically um, uh, has a world name uh, is find my package subdirectory worlds edge of my, my robot world straightforward and you can put other parameters here. Uh, the robot description is is find Zachro uh, minus minus in order uh, find this package name erdef edge of my robot dot Zachro and so the robot description this is the exact same thing you did yesterday um, and then um, um, uh, this is going to spawn um, a robot into gazebo um, and so it's going to run gazebo and um, so it's going to uh, uh, package gazebo spawn erdef spawn model args is minus prem robot description dot erdef dot launch and so it's going to um, the parameter is robot description the erdef is uh, is edge of my robot and um, so that's uh, what ran that uh, gazebo launch file and my uh, erdef directory just has one file my robot dot zacro and so this is just uh, actually uh, an extension of the thing that you did yesterday. Um, and uh, I've asked you to add some sort of a sensor. It could be a camera. It could be anything. Um, in the afternoon, I've asked you to do that. Uh, you don't have to do that this morning. Um, and you basically need to add, um, uh, if you haven't added collision, you should add collision because uh, Gazebo wants to detect collisions um, and, uh, and inertial. Um, uh, Things, it's, it's surprising that you can choose more or less random values that have no physical meaning and, and the simulation doesn't work, work too badly. Um, I chose for my body to have a mass of one kilogram, which is certainly not what true, and moments, mass moments of inertia of one kilogram uh, meter squared along the principal axes that were the, uh, so IXX, IYY, and IZZ. So that's why my robot's so slugg sluggish, um, because it's um, probably an order of magnitude uh, higher in the simulation in its mass and moment of inertia, and um, uh, and notice that the origin um, of this uh, of this term is um, uh, x y z uh, zero zero minus zero point one. That's it. That's the pendulum right there. Um, and I'm really frustrated by. I already, I already ranted about lack of comments in Zachra, lack, lack of nice comments. Um, everything else here is pretty straightforward. We've added collision and inertial to things. Um, and uh, you can add friction to the joints. And I added frictions to the joints just so that the simulation would damp out. It wouldn't just kind of roll around, echo forever. It would be dissipative. Um, and um, this is the plug-in. Um, and this, in this afternoon, there's a tutorial where it'll go through plugins. Um, and, uh, but this is how you specify a camera plugin. Um, you make a link uh, for the uh, camera to be in, and this is what the camera plugin looks like. Uh, you have parameters for the camera, you know, field of view, update rate, so on and so forth, noise level, um, pixel image, all sorts of things. The camera models will generate noisy, noisy images, um, and you can control the distortion. Um, and this afternoon, we're not going to get there yet. You'll you'll use a, a plug-in for a differential drive controller to drive the robot around. So, um, so that's where we're going. Um, Forty-five minutes. That's enough. Any questions? All right. Have fun. Um, and Andrew and I will be around uh, to uh, answer any questions.